So you always got to remember that. Now, there is context behind that because if your parents are wicked and into satanic nonsense and all this and that, he's not talking about that. But it, it's a promise that the Most High has with us if we do honor our parents. So we're going to go to Exodus 20 and we're going to read the first 17 verses. I'm going to write these down. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Days for the children. Yeah, that's why I need to write it down. <laughs> so we're gonna be in the Bible. We're gonna about to go to the law. We always gotta you know, read from the law. But we're also going to go into the apocrypha, which that's technically still part of the Bible, because it gives you more instructions and it, it helps you to understand that it's important. Um, but we'll get into it once we start reading um, Exodus 20. Okay, uh, Exodus. First one was Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 3. You got that? Yeah. Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Verses 1 through 17. Oops. I don't know where they I don't know what I have to do. So, verses 1. Oh. Chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Oh. I got it. Okay. Okay. So, Debbie, come a little closer in so you can actually read it. You're struggling a little bit back there, young king. I'm glad my glasses come off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So, one in go. One in God spake. No, okay, don't say the number. Just read it. And God spake. Spake. All, spake. All these words, saying, "I am the Lord, thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of." Bondage, thou shalt not, thou shalt have? Thou have no other God before me. Okay, so what does that mean? You shall have no other God before you. Like, Christ. Not to have another God. Hmm? Not to have another God. Like Santa Claus, like Easter Bunny. Um, Easter Bunny, like um, Satan. Some people worship Satan. So the Most High is telling us not to have another Elohim uh, before him, right? Okay, keep going. Thou shalt not make into thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So what does that mean? Okay, read verse 5. Thou shalt not bow and down thyself to them, nor serve them for the I Lord. For I the Lord, thy God, am I a jealous God visiting the iniquity. iniquity of the fathers upon the children into unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Okay, so what he's saying is we're not supposed to make any graven images uh, in anything in the earth and uh, what's beneath the earth and the waters in the heavens above. That's like people worship, literally worship the cross. You see people with crosses and rosary beads and, and whatever. We're not supposed to do that. We're not supposed to bow down. Pictures of, Je of quote unquote Jesus, the good ship Jesus, we're not supposed to have that and be bound down and worship it. Um, because he said that he visits the iniquities or the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. Because we don't know certain things that y'all will deal with in y'all's life, maybe because of the sins of one of your forefathers. And it's just getting to the third or fourth generation to where y'all can finally cut that thing off. So keep going. But he also always gives us mercy. Now let's see who the Most High gives us mercy. Gives mercy to. Go ahead. And showing mm -hmm. mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So who does the Most High show mercy to? Uh, the devil. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Who does he? Who's the Most High show mercy to? Read verse six again. And That's, just say and showing. And showing. Mercy into thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So who does the Most High show mercy to? All of them. All. Read verse read 6 the, again. Read the verse 6, Devin. 
showing mercy unto thousands of them that, that love me and keep my commandments. So who is the most I show mercy to? Us. Those who? Read verse 6 and actually comprehend it. The communion king. Those that keep the commandments. And? and the word right before Anson. Me. Love me. Who loves God and keeps his commandments. Okay, I'll read for a little bit. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahuwah thy Elohim in vain, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. So, you know, a lot of people think that it's saying like the GD cuss word, but the, the Most High imparted his name in us. So when we're not living the right way, we're not living according to his word, his law, his righteousness, his faith, we're taking his name in vain. It's more than just saying certain words. It's a life thing. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it Kodesh or holy. Notice that's the only commandment where he says to remember, like it's an important thing, because that's a sign between the Most High and us uh, forever, because we are his people and sheep of his pasture. But it says to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah thy Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahuwah made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So, if the Most High blesses something, who can unbless it, or who can make it evil? Nobody. Nobody. And if this is the day that he's blessed, and hallowed, or set apart. Twelve. This is the main thing for today. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahuwah thy Elohim giveth thee. That's an important thing, because in the, the, the times, the generations that we live in, Everything from entertainment, either on YouTube or on television and the movies, they teach you to want to be a rebellious kid. And to the most high, rebellion is as witchcraft to the most high. So witches are literally supposed to be put to death. So you got to be careful because you don't want the most high to reckon you with a witch. Nobody wants to die like a witch. I know I don't. Wow. It's not a good thing at all. <clears throat> Of course, we know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not uh, commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. What does bear false witness mean, Devin? Um, not to... You are about to say it. Tell lies? Exactly. On... You're not supposed to tell lies on you. my neighbor. Good, good. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So, what does it mean to covet? What? That's, it just means a donkey. I know you're looking at me crazy. It's not a cuss word. It just means a donkey. <laughs> it's in the Bible. It's I pulled it from the Bible. So. What does it mean to covet? We'll get there. We'll explain it. But one thing I was, I was reading, because I told you we're going to go back and forth between the Apocrypha and the Bible. So now we're going to go to Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus chapter 7. And this was so good because it, it gives you instructions on what you're supposed to do as a son or a, as um, a child to your mother or to your father. It's an important thing to honor your parents. It's... They make it seem like it's such a little thing in this land that we live in, but that's the reason why we are we are the tail and not the head because we can't follow the, the basic things that the Most High is trying to show us. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to be uplifted, if you want to be the head and not the tail, humble yourself like Moshe did. Y'all weren't here last week, but um, if you're on Ecclesiastes seven, one, yep. Wait. I'll read. I'll, I'll start seven. off. I'll start off. There's, 30, there there's 36 of them. Yeah. I'll, I'll read the first half, you read the second. 18 and 18. Okay. Now, this is 
really good wisdom. Like wisdom or the law is, is the mother in the Bible. So anytime you hear people talking about the law, it's the law of thy mother. That's the law. That's wisdom. Always seek out the wisdom. But the Most High, he gave us commandments because he's our father. Because he gave us laws, statutes, and commandments. So that's important to be able to understand. So uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, starting at verse 1. Do no evil, so shall no harm come unto thee. What does that mean? Exactly, exactly what it says. If you don't do evil to somebody, no evil comes to you because you reap what you sow. That is the universal law in this world. Whatever you do is going to be done unto you. Always remember that. Okay, verse 2. Depart from the unjust and iniquity shall turn away from thee. So what this means is if you if you got friends that you know are wicked, separate yourself from them so those sins won't be imparted on you or put on you because... We'll get, we'll get to what sins really is about, or I'll explain it later. Stop it. Now it says, <laughs> My son, sow not upon the furrows of unrighteousness, and thou shalt not reap them sevenfold. So again, don't do stuff that's sins, wickedness, or you're going to reap the reward of that, which it's it can be generational curses that last... They can just keep getting multiplied every third and fourth generation because nobody's cutting off the cycle. Because, true enough, this is, some, this is going to be the last captivity for a lot of our people. But all of our people aren't going to make it to the kingdom. Some of our people are going to go back into captivity all over again. So, in order for us to be able to make the cut and make it into the kingdom, we got to start uh, walking upright and doing justice. 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 <laughs> Seek not. Pages are calling you next. Seek not of the master preeminence, neither of the king's seat of honor. So, wherever you are in life, don't seek to always put yourself up in front of people or above people that are have been placed in higher um, places of authority than you. Um, we're supposed to be humble and the most high then he'll exalt you with being consistent so don't just be like oh well, I'm smarter than him so I'm just gonna you know just exalt myself above him because then the most high he will bring you down really fast or he'll use your parents to bring you down really quick because you have to obey your parents that's the context that we're focusing on today it's like some of the children nowadays think they know more than their parents mm -hmm. and they want to basically tell their parents what to do Instead mm -hmm. of the opposite way. Mm -hmm. so like, don't ever put yourself like, oh, well, I know that, so I'm going to be above my daddy, because then you're probably going to get a spanking. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> probably for a while. And don't act like them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Justify not thyself before Yahuwah, and boast not of thy wisdom before the, the king. So don't, don't just always try to, especially if you're praying, trying to repent, don't try to justify your actions when you know your actions were wicked to the most high. Don't justify them. Repent. You know, ask for forgiveness. Don't try to, even if you're trying to just, like, explain what happened even to your parents, but you were wrong, don't try to justify what you were doing. Just be honest with your speech. In other words, I tell you this all the time, stop making up excuses. Just be like, okay, yep, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. And stop blaming everything on me. And get up here and pay attention. <laughs> so, and then don't be so loud and boisterous or whatever, like because you, you've you've gained some type of information or wisdom or knowledge or whatever. Just don't do that. What's loud and boisterous about uh, Bryce? I was about to say boss. Mm -hmm. Bryce. Loud. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Loud that when you're yelling. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And like really loud, like you do sometimes. When mm -hmm. you scream. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the outburst you be having? Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to do that. I be yelling when I go very hard. Okay. Seek not to be judged, being not able to take away iniquity. Lest at any time thou fear the person of the mighty and a stumbling block in the way of thy uprightness. So don't be so quick to just think that you can judge everyone in every situation when you ain't living 
100% right and you got a nickel to your sin that you're dealing with. Because again, the Most High, He can humble any and everybody, and He does it at His will. <laughs> Offend not against the multitude of a city, and then thou shalt not cast thyself down among the people. Do your best not to offend people. Like, you, you literally have to guard what you say. That's what we've been kind of focusing on um, in these teachings is being, being very careful because your word is your bond or your oath. And we know that you reap what you sow. Life and death is in the power of the, or death and life is in the power of the tongue. In every situation in your life, your words matter. <laughs> Bind not one sin upon another, for in one thou shalt not be unpunished. Yeah, because if you're if you're, you know, doing wrong and you're in sin. Don't just do something else like, oh, well, I'm already in sin, so I'm unclean to the sundown, or whatever the case may be. Because you, if you heap in sin upon sin like, like this is talking about, then what you're bringing is more and more evil and wickedness to yourself. Uh, you wonder why, you know, all of a sudden, when everything was going fine, you can go ride your dirt bikes, you can go outside and do this, this, and that. But because you decided to uh, listen to and allow the spirits from your friends to get up on you, all of a sudden, now you can't get on your dirt bikes. Now you can't watch TV. Now you can't do anything without, without mom's permission because you've lost uh, that um, authority to do things because now you're outside of both the Most High's and your parents' um, blessing. Then there's only the curse. So you gotta, you, you got to pay attention and be careful. Say not, Elohim will look upon the multitude of my oblations and when I offer to the Most High Elohim, He will accept it because the Most High, what the Christian Church then does is He hates sinners. He hates sinners. So if you keep willfully doing things that are going to upset your, your parents, disobey them, and you think you're just going to pray to the Most High and He's going to forgive you, He's not. Because He hates sinners and all workers of iniquity. Be not faint-hearted when thou makest thy prayer, and neglect not to give alms. Well, all, men are to always pray and not to faint. Um, and always, you know, give to the poor. Uh, give to your assembly. Always try to help when you can. Giving is not always money either. Sometimes it's just time. Sometimes you're giving somebody advice. Sometimes you're being the shoulder to cry on. Sometimes you're just making your mama breakfast in bed when she's sick, like y'all did not too long ago. Uh, sometimes it's just doing your chores without your mom have to say nothing to give her some shalom. That's honoring your mother and your father. Being proactive, showing initiative. It's honoring your mother and your father. Laugh no man to scorn in the bitterness of his soul, for there is one which humbleth and exalteth. So let's say Bryce did something because um, he wouldn't listen to anybody, hurt himself, and you're just going to laugh and laugh and laugh because he hurt himself. You're not supposed to do that. That's not loving your neighbor as yourself. Or vice versa. Bryce, you do the same thing. You can't do that. So you're don't not supposed to do that. When he gets hurt. Devise not a lie against thy brother, neither do the like to thy friend. Because especially I remember growing up, stuff would happen brothers going to blame each other for it even though one of the, only one of them did it or maybe they both did it complicitly. Stop lying against your brothers. Can't always blame Bryce. Can't always make excuses. Blaming Devin. I don't blame Devin. Mm -hmm. He always blames me. Is that a lie? No. Mm -hmm. He keeps blaming me all the time. <laughs> Use not to make any manner of lie, for the custom thereof is not good. Don't make it a habit in lying. Mm -hmm. Don't be a, a false uh, speaker. Like you just don't be that person. Nobody likes a liar. Nobody. You can't trust them. Whoa. And that's a very. It's really a lonely life because I know I don't. Once I know somebody's a liar, oh, I don't even talk to. Them. I don't deal with them. I don't fool with them. I can love you from a distance. Just because I love you don't mean I got to talk to you. Yeah. Use not many words in a multitude of elders and make not much babbling when thou prayest. So, Devin, what does that mean to you? Verse 14. 
Use not many words in a multitude of elders. Mm. Help, uh, help elders listen yeah. to the words. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Use not many words in a multitude or in a, a gathering of elders. What does that mean? Yeah, you should be slow to speak and quick to listen. You're supposed to be soaking up that information and that wisdom. You shouldn't be saying a whole lot um, around elders. It's, it's really disrespectful, especially if you're trying to out-talk them. Mm -hmm. And, but, but, were you going to say something? Yeah. Go ahead. We good. Hmm? Oh, are you going to read? No, go ahead. Okay. Like you, when you're around your poppy and then um, Brother Mike is over there or he has some other friends, like, you know how they're talking as older people, mm -hmm. you're supposed to pretty much sit there and take in their knowledge and not just like interrupt or think that you're like as old as them. So you just kind of stand in the back like, okay, you're learning from them. Unless it's something bad, then you need to probably walk away. <laughs> yeah. It, it doesn't matter if you're in the car or in the house, just listen. I just, I, I come out with Papa. I bet the dog. You did start it, right? Okay, it says, and make not much babbling when thou prayest. Basically, be whatever you're saying, just say it. Don't try to beat around the bush when you're praying to the Most High, because He knows what you need anyway. He just wants you to humble yourself and pray to Him, because He can do it all and everything. Hate not laborious work, neither husbandry, which the Most High hath ordained. So basically he's telling us not to be lazy and don't hate doing things outside that we're doing with the work of our own hands because the Most High is going to bless it, in other words. Hmm. Because in, in this nation we know that people, they uh, we want to just go home, chill out, relax, and um, hope the Most High just makes everything work when he told us to work from the sweat of, from the sweat of our own brow. You know? Without faith is dead, right? Dead. Dead. Number not thyself among the multitude of sinners, but remember that wrath will not tarry long. So if you know that you got some people to, that you're hanging out with or whatever, and, or that are your friends, and that they're like out there, out there sinners, don't number yourself with them or you're going to get their reward. And we're going to get to what the reward of sin is here in a little bit. <laughs> Because the Most High says his wrath won't tarry long or um, your judgment, his judgment will come quick is what it's saying. Humble thyself greatly for the vengeance of the ungodly is fire and worms. So be quick to be humble. Don't be so prideful. Mm. Um, just because you're older don't mean you're always right. Just because you're younger and you may have a little bit more wisdom in the subject doesn't mean you're more right than him. Right? It's just because you, you don't get your way don't mean you got to go start yelling and um, having a fit all the time. You listening? Humble yourself. What did he say? He said, humble yourself. That means if you don't get your way, don't go have a fit. Pay attention. I'll make you put that down. Change not a friend for any good by no means. Neither a faithful brother for the gold of Ophir. So whenever you have good, genuine people, keep them. I don't try to change up just because somebody else got more money. Mm -hmm. Like, don't trust me. Because when you find real day ones that, like, that you can really have, like, a life partnership with, whether it's in a relationship with a woman or with, you know, men that you can re really call brother, you got to hold on to good people. Um, Forego not a wise and good woman, for her grace is above gold. So especially mm -hmm. since y'all are young kings and y'all eventually are going to grow up and get married to women. Go for a woman that seeks after the Most High, that's righteous, that has eyes only for you. Don't go for the woman that every guy wants. Mm -hmm. Don't go for the woman that has that, um, <laughs> that has that, let's say, clamorous nature to where all she wants to do is just try to out-talk a man and, you know, don't want to let you grow into being the head that you're supposed to be because the man is the head of the household, unlike what Christianity teaches. You know um, what he's talking about? If you have questions, you can ask, Devin. Yeah, please ask. Okay, so 
the man is the head of the woman because the woman was created for the man and from the man, from Adam's rib, the woman was created. So as that, that means that you are the head of the household. So when you grow up, you'll have a wife. Now, I'm not. Hmm? Okay, you'll have a wife. Both of you guys will probably have wives. When, when that happens, you'll have sons and daughters. You are the head or you are responsible for that whole household. You, what are you, what, from, you're supposed to provide, you're supposed to protect, and you're supposed to lead them in the ways of righteousness to the Most High. That's your responsibility. The Most High is going to hold both of you guys accountable when you, when you guys become older. Because y'all don't even understand right now, I don't think y'all can comprehend it, but in the, the day and age that we live in, we live in Isaiah, I think it's 3 and verse 12 or something like that, where children are or our children are our oppressors and women rule over us. Mm -hmm. That's not the natural order of things. And nobody's saying you gotta be, you know, just beating on everything and pumping on your chest and whatever, but because we're not in order, because we don't step up, that's why our houses aren't in order. That's why generational curses keep going and keep going. But we are the generations that are gonna cut these things off. Can you start reading for a little bit? Uh, where'd you leave off? You're on 20. Okay. Whereas thy servant worketh truly, entreat him not evil, nor the hireling that bestoweth himself wholly for thee. Holy for thee. So basically when you got a, um, let's say you own your own company, you got an employee that's working for you and they work really good, um, then you're supposed to do righteously by them. That's all that's saying. That's it. Just do right by them. Let that soul love a good servant and defraud him not of liberty. Right, especially if they're really good. Like, no matter what it is, don't try to take away more from them than what you're supposed to. Be fair and impartial. Hast thou cattle, have an eye to them, and if they be for thy profit, keep them with thee. Mm -hmm. Keep on. Have thou children, instruct them, and bow down their neck from their youth. Raise them to be humble from their youth. Don't raise children that are just going to be doing whatever they want to do because if they don't uh, learn to control their emotions or their their minds, evil could be in their future. So, hast thou daughters have or hast thy daughters have a care of their body and shew not thyself cheerful toward them? Well, yeah, has the care for uh, of their body. Or make sure you're taking care of them. And it says, and show not thyself cheerful toward them. Don't be overly, because like, especially nowadays when, when men have daughters, you know, they're too cheerful. They let them get their way too much mm -hmm. to their detriment. So even with having daughters, you still have to be firm. And you have to be able to, I don't want to say rule, but you have to be able to be an adult. You have to be able to be their mother or their father. You, you can't just... Oh, because it's a girl, I can't, I can't, you know, give them a whooping. Oh, I can't really ground her or this, this, that. No, because you're not helping anybody. You still got to discipline your children. They have to care of their bodies. Basically, teach them how to respect their, their bodies. Yep. So that way they won't be out in the world mm -hmm. doing things that you guys seen little girls do already. <laughs> Remember when we talked about this? Mm -hmm. like they don't need to be doing that because they have to value their bodies. And if they're doing that, then that means they don't value who they are or their bodies. Uh, marry thy daughters, and or marry thy daughter, and so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter, but give her to a man of understanding. So when y'all are fathers and y'all are allowing your daughters to get married, don't let your daughter marry no fool. Somebody that's a, a woman beater, a drunkard, or a drunk, or believes in Satan, like whatever, don't do that. Just don't. <laughs> that's not a righteous thing to do, because then that's going to mess up your name because that's that's why there's generation to generation. You're supposed to make sure that you're keeping a holy name, not even just your name, the holy name to the Most High. So. Mm -hmm. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a light woman. So mm -hmm. the, the type of women you should be looking for when, whenever you get to marrying age is a woman <clears throat> that can become one with you in the mind. So you don't want a woman that's always going against everything that you're trying to do, the visions that you have, the dreams that you have, what you feel like the Most High is leading you to do. Don't go after the woman that all she wants to do is rebel. Because remember, rebellion is as witchcraft. Mm -hmm. It is as witchcraft. Ooh. 
<laughs> Honor thy father with thy whole heart and forget not the sorrows of thy mother. So even in spiritual context, we know that the law is your mother and the commandments are of the Most High or from the Most High. But it says, honor thy father with thy whole heart. Even when he's not around like he should be, remember, you're still carrying around his name. You're still supposed to honor and obey your parents. You have to, unless you don't want to live long. If you want to live a short life, keep being disobedient. You don't want to live past 18, 21. You don't want to see what it's like in the kingdom. Keep being rebellious. Keep on. Okay. <laughs> remember that thou wast begotten of them, and how canst thou recompense them the things that they have done for thee? So it says, remember that thou was begotten of them when you were born of your parents. And how can you repay them the things that have been done for you? They birthed you. They fed you every day of your life. Clothed you. Gave you water to drink. Gave you the tablets. You know, the houses. The trips. Everything that you have is because your parents love you. Honor your mother and your father. Honor them. Okay. Fear the Lord with all thy soul and reverence his priest. And fear means to respect, to honor, and to obey the Most High. And the priests, the mores, the, the people that are trying to teach you and lead you guys in righteousness. But still, again, honor your, your parents. Keep going. Love him that they may love him that made thee with all thy strength and forsake not his ministers. Talking about the most high. Love the most high with all your heart. Fear the Lord and honor the priest, and give him his portion, as it is commanded thee, the first fruits and the tripass offering, and the gift of the sh shoulder, and the sacrifice of the sanctification. Did I say that right? Yeah, the sacrifice of sanctification. And, <laughs> and the and the first fruits of the holy things. Yeah, just give, just give to the most high to his people. Keep going. And stretch thy hand unto the poor, that that blessing may be perfected. Always try to help poor when you can. You already have that in your heart. Because every time you see somebody poor, you're like, Mom, can we help you? Good. Don't lose that ever. A gift hath grace in the sight of every man living, and for the dead detain it not. Mm -hmm. fail, fail not to be with them that weep and mourn with them that mourn. Like, for mourn. instance, if your mom is going through something from surgery, and if she's crying, whatever, don't be like, oh, I don't feel like dealing with that. Be there for them. When it's your time, because when you're in need, you're going to need somebody to be there for you. Because remember, you, a universal law is you reap what you sow. Or you, you, you get what you give. Uh, be not slow to visit the sick. For that shall make thee to be loved. Same thing we were just talking about. Okay. Whatsoever thou takest in hand, remember the end, and thou shalt never do a mess. Yeah. So whenever you get something or have the potential to do something, think about what end can come. Like if it's only good uh, outcomes and there's no wickedness that can come to you, good. But if, if you're stealing from somebody, if you get caught, you know you could go to jail for 20 years. Mm. Think about the outcome. Like don't just think in the present. Think, try to think moves ahead. Okay, so now, getting back into the law, let's go to Deuteronomy 5. Well, you don't have to go anywhere, I'm just going to read it, uh, verse 21. Because the context today is children obeying your parents, and you got to understand, by obeying your parents, for one, like we were talking about earlier, you don't want to become a liar or be lying on your neighbor. We're going to get to what neighbor is here in a minute. Um, Oh, did I just skip that? Whoops. Mm -hmm. up twice. Well, I'll just put it out of order. Okay, right. All right. So, Deuteronomy 5, verse 21. Neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife, neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox, or his ass, or anything that is, is thy neighbor's. So, especially Bryce. If Devin has friends that you don't have, has toys that, you, that that he has that you can't play with yet, don't covet it because you have your own. Your mother have, and your father have given you your own portion. When you get older and more mature enough to be able to handle certain things, then do those things. But don't try to covet. Don't lust after something that's not yours because that leads you into getting into sin. Into Well, well if I can't play with that, I'm, I'm going to break it and say I don't know what happened. Or I'm going to hide it and say I don't know what happened. 
Because then both of y'all are going to get in trouble by mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, because that's, that's a revolving door. So don't covet. Don't let, if it's something that you don't have, ask the most high for it. And just don't be like, oh, man, I, I'll, do, well, I'll do whatever I got to do to get it. I'll do anything to get it. Like, just don't covet that. Ask the most high and he'll, he'll give it to you in his time. In his time. Okay, so contacts the neighbors. So, what is when it says your thy neighbor's wife? What does it mean by neighbor? In today's world, they would say like your next door neighbor, right? Okay, that's what they would say. But the word there is actually Rhea. You see it down here, Rhea. Um, you see it says an associate more or less it says brother it can mean companion fellow friend it can either mean husband uh, lover neighbor so in the context of neighbor they're talking about your family so you're not supposed to be jealous of, of the things that your family has or the other freedoms that other family members have that you don't have yet Okay, so just remember that because they'll try to say, oh, it's your next door neighbor. It can mean that in times. But in the same token, the context of all this is about your family, yeah. your brother, your mother, your father, obeying your parents. <laughs> so back to this question. I told you I'm not going to keep you out here longer than that. Why is obedience so important? So can honor your parents and all your grandfathers and grandmas and but, but, but why? why? You read it, it was a few years ago. Because six. um you won't you basically won't live long. There you go. Right. Because long life, because the most I said if we obey his commandments and then we can live in them. And then he said if you honor your father and, and your mother, he would give us long life. If you're not doing those things you are literally shortening your days by each rebellious act, thought. So guard your mouth, guard your mind especially, guard your actions because they speak the loudest. So if you don't want to live long, if you don't want to have, you know, a good inheritance that you can give to your children's children and walk into the, the kingdom that, that's uh, coming, keep being rebellious. Okay. So now we're going to go back to Ecclesiasticus. We're going to go to Ecclesiasticus chapter 3. You said chapter 3? Chapter 3. I told you we're going to be quick today. Three, one, two. I didn't get everything I wanted to get in here because I'm real busy. But. 1 through 18? Mm -hmm. I'm going to start. Um, yeah, hold on. <clears throat> Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that you may be safe. So obey these things that I tell you so that you can live in safety. For Yahuwah have given the father honor over the children. Your father has honor over you, has authority over you. So is your mother. And have confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. You have to obey your parents. you got to listen to your mama. Like, your mama told you not to come. She told you to sit over here, didn't she, Bryce? Bryce, your mama told you to sit over here, didn't she? Why are you over there? Because, uh, what did she say? She told you to sit right there, didn't she? Get over here. Come back over here. And don't get up again and let your mama say, this is what we're talking about. you got a rebellious spirit on you. Put that tablet up. Put it up. Cut it off. I'm just putting it in the bag. Straighten up before we take a trip to the bathroom. I'm going to read this again because you really need to hear this. Listen. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that you may be safe. For Yahuwah hath given the father honor over the children 
and have confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Listen to your mother. She's here because she loves you and she wants you to make it. She, she wants you to be something in your life. But you're just worried about your own whatever you want to do. You better learn to control your emotions because they will betray you one day. Whoso honoreth his father maketh, maketh an atonement for sins. Honoring your mother, honoring your father gives you forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness of sins. And he that honoreth his mother is as, as one that layeth up treasure. So when you honor your parents, you're putting treasures up and you're sending them up. You're getting them from the most high. You're literally storing up good things for your life. Do you like treasures? You like games? You and like gifts. toys? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, obey your parents. Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy over, uh, excuse me. Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children. And he and when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. Why are you not in that chair? No, need to put that back together right now. Get back in the chair. Sit down. You don't need to turn anything. Sit down and listen. Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children. So when you honor your parents, that's going to make your life as a parent, when that day does come, easier. It'll be a joy to you. It's a blessing to you. And when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. So then the Most High, because you are doing the righteous thing, the Most High is going to listen to your prayers, give you your heart's desires. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life. Wasn't that what we were just talking about? Mm -hmm. Obeying your mother and your father to have a long life. And will do service unto his parents as to he... Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life. And he that is obedient unto Yahuwah shall be a comfort to his mother. Mm -hmm. Right, so you think you're being a comfort to your mother right now? Hmm? Answer. Mm -hmm. Do you think you're being a comfort to your mother right now? Consequences, buddy. He that feareth Yahuwah will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Will do honor to his father. And will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Do you act like this to, to your teachers, Bryce? Does he do that at school? He don't go to school. I'm just saying when he did it. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Honor thy father and mother both in word and, and deed, that a blessing may come upon thee from them. So you don't want to be blessed whenever you're willfully being rebellious. Because you can't... Um, be obedient because you want to have your way because it's all me, 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 self-exaltation. Always has got to be what I want, when I want it, how I want it. For the blessing of the Father establisheth the houses of children, but the curse of the mother rooted out foundations. So if you're not, because you, to understand that context, you got to go back up to verse 8. Honor thy father and mother, both in word and deed, that a blessing may come upon thee. So you both are going to be fathers, right? Mm -hmm. For the blessing of the father establishes the house of children. Mm. If you're not walking in a blessing to the Most High, you're a curse. And it says, but the curse of the mother root of out foundations. Gotcha. It says mother, but still, if you're not walking in blessings, you're walking in curses. If you're walking in curses, it's going to keep going to the third and fourth generation. We're always going to be servants. We're always going to be the tail and not the head. We're not going to get the things that we want. We'll always be ruled over uh, by our oppressors. This is not a little thing. This is a serious thing. 
Glory not in the dishonor of thy father, for thy father's dishonor is no glory unto thee. Because remember, the father is the glory of the children. So if your father, if you know you got a wicked father, don't don't be trying to be just like him. <laughs> don't be like, oh, no, I'm going to be just like my dad because he was this, this, and that when you know he ain't no good. That's not a good thing. Mm. Ooh. Yes. Go That's ahead. seated really bad in this, mm -hmm. this world today because you have children that will uplift their father that has literally been in and out of prison, mm -hmm. selling drugs, stealing stuff, mm -hmm. you know, doing all kinds of stuff, rather than honoring a father that actually works and provides and takes care of his, his household. Mm -hmm. so that's, wow, that's pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Sad, but, wow. Yeah, it's really sad, because people got, you know, fathers that were you know, in gangs and, you know, die with thieves and robbers and alcoholics. I'm going to be just like my father. Mm -hmm. My father did this. My mother did that. No, no. It's like, no. They're wicked. They're wicked. Don't try to be like them. Don't be, don't always be like, yeah, I'm going to be just like him. No. Want, want to be righteous. Want to be mm -hmm. holy to the most high. Like, right? learn what the most high wants. Go ahead. No, I'm just thinking, like, it's, it's really, a, it's a problem that we, our people have. Because, I mean, I literally grew up watching not like per se our household but just the fact that um the people that were in my home or in my family watching them grow up with the same situation and not just the kids saying i want to be just like my dad i think he's cool but also the mother encouraging them to be just like that and i'm just like man had we only knew what the word really said about you know honoring the mother and father and what not to follow things would have been a lot different, but it's just, wow. Just generation across the curses, like you said, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. Sad. Wow. Bryce, sit down, right. Late. For the glory of a man is from the honor of his father, and a mother in dishonor is a reproach to the children. For the glory of a man is from the is uh, for the glory of a man is from the honor of his father. So the more righteous your father is, the the bigger of a of an honor basically it is or a blessing it is to be that son. And a mother in dishonor is a reproach to the children. Like if y'all had a mother that didn't care about y'all and didn't love y'all and wasn't um, always taking heed and thinking about y'all's souls. I can understand why you, you maybe you would want to always be rebellious, but you've got a mother that tries to do everything she can to give y'all the things that she didn't have, uh, to raise y'all as best as she can. And to be honest, you take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Our parents won't be here forever. Nobody's parents will be here forever. We don't know how long we have with our parents. Yep. But when that day comes, if you haven't been the son that you're supposed to be, you're going to regret it. It's going to eat you alive. We don't have our parents forever. They have an expiration date. You have an expiration date. Being more rebellious, you're bringing that expiration date or that death day to you sooner than later. Children, obey your parents. My son, help thy father in his age and grieve him not as long as he liveth. So when your parents get older, always try to be helpful to them. Or even now, be as helpful to them as you can. And, in, and if his understanding fail, have patience with him and despise him not when thou art in thy full strength. Because when they get older, their memory goes. It's a fact of life. Don't look down upon them remembering how they used to be. And because you, you have your sound mind still intact. Don't look down upon them. Don't have a prideful look or act prideful towards them. Because one day you'll have children and you always reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. If you're a rebellious child, you're going to get double rebellion when you're a parent. You're going to get double hell when you're a parent. Mm -hmm. Double hell. For the relieving of thy father shall not be forgotten and instead of sins, it shall be added to build thee up. So again, it gives you blessings when you are honoring your father and your mother. Honor and obey them in word and in deed or in your actions. Cleaning your rooms. 
Talk that talk. That's what it is. In the day of thine affliction or trouble, it shall be remembered. Thy sins also shall melt away as the ice in the fair warm weather. So when you're honoring your father and your mother, you're being helpful to them. In the days where trouble comes up to, uh, to you, your sins and your troubles will disappear because you have been doing things that are right and righteous because you are obeying your parents. Because rebellion is as witchcraft to the Most High. You are reckoned as a witch and we're not supposed to suffer a witch to live according to the Bible. Witches are supposed to die according to the Most High. So keep on walking in rebellion. He that forsaketh his father is as a blasphemer, and he that angereth his mother is cursed of Elohim. So whenever y'all even anger your parents because y'all are just not doing right, it's like you <laughs> is cursed of Elohim. He that forsaketh his father is as a blasphemer. So if you don't listen to, to your parents, you're as one that talks bad to the Most High. And if you anger your mother, it's as you're cursed of the Most High. Do y'all want to be cursed from the Most High? Do y'all want to go like our ancestors did back into slavery? Huh? On slave ships? Beaten, raped, robbed, murdered, everything? Keep being rebellious. Y'all are going to keep generational curses going instead of cutting them off at the head. Because y'all have that opportunity. Y'all are getting to learn from a young age mm -hmm. what is needed. We, the way we were raised in Christianity, we didn't even know who we were. We weren't given that choice or that chance. The Most High, he's, he's woken us up. That way we can help show you guys so you don't fall back into the curses of Deuteronomy. You know, we're going to go back here in a minute too. Because I don't think you understand what the curses are. Mm -hmm. Okay. My son, go on with uh, thy business in meekness. Be humble. So shalt thou be beloved of him that is approved, the Most High. The greater thou art, or the wiser, or the more blessed you are, the more humble thyself. Be more humble. Every time you get exalted, be humble. Don't be like the world and be boastful about it. Stay humble. And thou shalt find favor before the Most High. So why is it important to um, obey your parents? So you can live longer. Mm -hmm. okay. That's true. And not be cursed from the Most High. <laughs> so, because I wasn't even going to do this, but we're going to go to Deuteronomy 28. That's not in here. We are the only people on this earth that is in a blood covenant with the Most High. He will never break his covenant. No, because the, the first verse is about the blessings, if I'm not mistaken. The first verse is easy. So we're going to start at 15. Okay. Devin, come here. I was going to pass on the phone. Huh? I was going to pass on the phone. Okay, okay, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Read. You're going to start. You're just going to read. I'll tell you when to stop. And do it on the 28th. Starting at verse 15. These are the curses. Whenever you're being disobedient, this is what you can fall into. But it shall come to pass, if thou will, will not hearken or listen, hearken unto the, the voice of the Lord thy God, the observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command be this day that all these curses shall come up the and overtake thee. So the Most High said, if you do not observe and do all the commandments that He gave us, that all the Most High is telling us He is going to curse our people. This is not man talking. This is the Most High talking about our people. So when you aren't being obedient to your parents, you can fall under all of these curses. Keep going. Cursed. Shall thou be in the city, mm -hmm. and cursed shall thou be in the field. So, whether you go uh, in the city, 
like in this small town of Muskogee, or whether you're going outside in your field, you, you're going to be cursed even there. Keep going. Hers shall be thy basket and thy store. So even uh, when we're farming, when we're storing up stuff, maybe you're saving up money in, in the, and you're buying stuff in the basket in the store. Everything you do, the Most High is going to curse it. That's what he's saying. Keep going. Hers shall be the fruit of the body and the fruit of the thy land, the increase of the thy kind, thy kind and the flocks of they, they so, curse shall be the fruit of thy body. That means that can be your own physical body, or that can be your children. And then he's gonna he's gonna curse um, all the cattle that you're raising. He'll curse everything if you're not uh, obeying and being obedient to your parents and obeying the Most High. That's a commandment from the Most High, with promise to give you a long life. Keep going. Curse shall thou be when when. Thou comes when thou comes in, when you come, come in, and the and curse shall, shall thou be when thou goes get goes out. Go, go. So what that means is, uh, no matter where you go, whether you, you come in some place or whether you leave some place, you're, you're still going to be cursed. The curse is going to be on you wherever you go. You cannot run from it. No matter what you do, you won't. You're in a blood covenant with the Most High. This is his word. He, he will, his word cannot return until him void. Keep going. The Lord shall spend upon, upon the cursing, vex, vexation, vexation and rebuke, and all thou that thou settest thine hand unto for to do until thou be destroyed. And until thou perish quickly because of the wicked, wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. So what this is saying, that the Most High is going to send cursings, like that witches literally put on people, vexation and rebuke, you're going to be always talked about bad. He's, then he said he's going to curse everything that you set your hand unto. Whether it's farming, whether you're trying to go into the military, whatever you're, you're trying to do, the Most High is going to curse it. He'll let you get in there just for you to get dishonorably discharged. Or maybe if you're the, if you're really that wicked, he'll make sure that that you get uh, injured or something to the point to where you, you can never have a normal life again. If you're not walking uprightly with the Most High, and if you're not being obedient to your parents, because right now you're either storing up treasures or you're storing up curses. So it's it's up to you. You make the choice: treasures or curses, blessings, curses. Which one? Which one do you want? Because every action is supposed to honor our parents in word and in deed. And in deed. Keep going. The Lord shall make these pen, uh, the pestilence. pestilence cleave unto me until we until he he. have consumed thee from off the land. With, whither mm -hmm. thou ghost Goest, to, goest, goest, goest to pos possess, possess it. So he's saying that he's going to send sicknesses and diseases to you. Mm. Mm. That's what he's going to send to you. Okay, keep going. Keep going. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, consumption, and with a fever, and with a inflammation. Mm -hmm. and with an extreme burning and with a, the sword, the sword mm -hmm. and with blasting and with mildew mm -hmm. and they shall pursue thee into the empire. So he's going to make sure that these curses, this inflammation, this fever, this extreme uh, incurable disease, even he'll have to send people to come kill you with the sword or with the gun. The Most High is going to do this until it kills you, is what he says. This is the Most High. He don't play. He don't play. Keep going. What, what are you going to say, something? I was thinking about all the, the diseases that are here. <laughs> it's like, it makes you think, like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Like, all the disobedience, not mm -hmm. following the laws and statutes, not keeping the Word of God. Mm -hmm. 
and then all of a sudden it's just like all this sicknesses up on sicknesses and these new sicknesses it's like it's literally that not i mean and that's just like disobedience with everything just of the word of god yeah because it's honor the, uh well the law of thy mother because the law is our mother mm -hmm. and the commandments is the most high so yeah like you said that's being disobedient wow mm -hmm. Keep it, it takes a different there was like what mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a a, a a point of like where you're i'm your mom you guys have to be obedient but in the spiritual context it's like the law and the statutes right mm -hmm. are yeah because the law is, is reckoned um to wisdom uh, which is given a feminine trait as a woman. So that's why they say the law is your mother. But the commandment which yeah. comes from the Most High is okay. your father. That's that the masculine. Sense. Wow. Because we, we were creating in the image of the Creator. So that's why there's a mother and a father. Law, commandments. So, so you break those laws and commandments, you're being disobedient to, to your, your parents. parents yep. And that's why there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. This is exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Are you good? Just have a moment. Mm -hmm. And thou heaven that is over the thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under they shall be iron. So that's basically saying that the heaven or that the life you live will always be in servitude, and you'll be going uh, in slavery in chains. That's basically what that's saying. In chains. Keep on. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land, powder and dust, from heaven shall it come up down of thee, until thou be destroyed. He'll bring a famine, and he'll shut up the heaven so you won't get water till you die from dehydration, basically is what that's saying. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before the thine enemies. Thou shalt shalt go out one way against them and flee seven seven ways before them and shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. So he's saying, I'm going uh, you will go out um, before you to go fight your enemies. You will be killed before your enemies. You will come against them as one big army. And then you will flee, you will run away scared in seven different directions, and you'll go into captivity into all nations. Just like what happened in the trans slave trade. Because we didn't honor our parents. Because we didn't honor the law of our mother or the commandments of our father. Because we are still aren't honoring our parents and being obedient to them. So keep on. These curses will come upon you. Keep on. Mm-hmm. And thou carcase mm -hmm. shall be meat, meat, meat oh. unto all fowls of the air, and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fry, fry, fry them away. Okay, so that's basically saying that. Like that you're 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 carcass because remember he said that you you would die in the verse before, so then like you know when you die you have a carcass it's just your dead body will be meat for everybody else so they will literally be eaten of your carcass. Whoa. That's what the Most High is talking about. That's the curse that he's gonna put on you. Not only will you die before your enemies, but then he'll let them eat you literally. Literally, there's cannibals in here. There's a lot of sex trafficking and human trafficking going on. What do you think they'd be doing? They'd literally be eating people. Mm. They're people eaters. So that's gross. Yeah. The and it says nobody shall free them or nobody shall free them. The Lord will smite thee with the bouch, botch, botch of Egypt, and with the emeralds, mm -hmm. and with the scab, and with the itch, and whereof thou canst, canst, canst. Can't not be healed. Uh, so he's gonna give you incurable diseases, is what that is saying. Incurable diseases, specifically something that was from in Egypt that came upon them to where they you couldn't be healed from it. That's a curse from rebellion. From rebellion. Keep going. The Lord shall smite thee with madness mm -hmm. and blindness. Hmm. And not astonishment. astonishment of the 
of heart. So he will uh, he will hit you with basically being crazy, you know, being in mental mm. wards uh, and blindness. That could be a literal blindness. That could be a spiritual blindness and astonishment of heart because you can't believe all the wickedness is happening to you because so you literally go mad. You know, people that got multiple personalities. The most I will go ahead and curse you with that. Keep going. Should be on verse 29. Twenty-nine. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt shalt grope, grope, grope at noonday, as the blind grope, grope, gropeth, gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not per prosper. prosper in thy ways. And th thou shalt be only oppressed. And spoiled. And spoiled evermore, evermore, and no man shall save thee. So, the context of 29, he's talking about you shall grow up at noon, at noon day. You know, blind people, they have to they have to do this, right, because they can't see where they're going. That's what he's saying he's going to hit you with, because you won't be able to get nobody to save you. And it said that uh, you shall not prosper. See, anything you put your hand into to do, or you put your mind to to do, the most high is going to make sure that it doesn't come to fruition and that he curses you. And then he says that you will only be oppressed or only be slaves and that no man shall save you. So nobody will be able to save you out of that oppression if you want to be disobedient. Because rebellion is just witchcraft. I have to keep saying that. Rebellion is witchcraft to the Most High. I'm going to show you all that here in a, in a little bit. Keep going. Mm, thou shalt shall not marry. Oh. Thou shalt marry, my bad. Thou shalt marry. Uh, that's good. It says betrothed, but that word is marry. Oh, marry a wife, and another man shall lie with her. So you'll get married to a woman, and then she's going to cheat on you. That's the kind of curse the most I was going to put. Keep going. Thou shalt build in house. Bryce. And thou Sit shalt up, Bryce. not dwell therein. therein. So, thou shalt, mm -hmm. uh, keep on. Thou shalt uh, plant a vin vineyard, mm -hmm. vineyard mm -hmm. and shalt not gather the grapes therefore. So in this verse he said, you'll marry a wife and then somebody else will be sleeping with your wife. Somebody will, will be having sex with your own wife. You'll build a house as a slave, but you won't be able to live in there like the, like the White House. Dang. You built that building up. And we don't live there. We don't rule there. You, you'll build a vineyard. You'll plant a vineyard. And it'll be, you'll be planting it for somebody else because you won't have any ownership. You won't have any type of power. That's the curse that can come upon you. Keep going. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat therefore. Thereof. Thine. Hmm? Thereof. Thereof. Thine Ass, that's a donkey. Okay. As it shall be violently mm -hmm. taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thy enemies, and thou shalt not have none to rescue them. So. If you're a, a farmer and you're raising all this cattle, it will be taken before your face, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. The Most High is going to curse you with that. You'll be raising it for no reason. You're raising it for somebody else because like, somebody else is going to enjoy it. Yep, like the chickens and the goats shall be taken mm -hmm. care of. Bryce, please turn around before you hurt yourself. Turn around. Well, then go to sleep. Turn around, though, because if that chair crashes, you're going to be in a world of hurt, sir. Thy sons, the and uh, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto other people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing, um, longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no night. So when you have children. 
They will be sold into slavery, and you'll be looking for them, and you can't find them. That's a curse of most high promises. If you are disobedient to your mother and your father, what happened? Keep going. The fruit of the my land and all thy labor, which thou hast done, and the fruit of thy So, the fruit of the land, like whatever farming, uh, you know, raising cattle, all of that, all your labor shall a nation that you don't know eat up, so you won't even enjoy it, and you will only be slaves. That's what the Most High said he would do to us. Keep going. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Because oppression makes a wise man mad. Keep going. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall smite thee in in the knees mm -hmm. and in the legs mm -hmm. with a sore butt that cannot be healed from the sole of the foot unto the top of thy head. Just like it says, the most eyes will. Justice Terrell. Mm -hmm. Get on that chair. Just like he said, he's going to hit you with the a botch or a sore in the knees. In the knees. Come on. Okay, keep going. 36. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers I have known, and there shall go serve other gods, wood and stone. That's exactly what happened to us. Uh, our kings that we had over us ended up leading us in wickedness. We went into slavery, and now people are in Christianity worshiping wood and stone, the cross, you know, or uh, the Christian cross, or the the Islamic um, Kaaba stone. Keep going. Uh, oh my gosh. 37. And thou shalt become an astonished astonishment, astonishment, a proverb, mm -hmm. proverb, and a vow. No, you're not. Among all nations, whither. The Lord shall be okay, so you basically you become a thing that people hate no matter where you go. You know, black people, we're, we're always hated, we don't know why. Right. Keep going. Which one? Keep going. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and shall gather but little in for the lo locusts. Mm -hmm. Shall consume it. So what's going to happen is, you know, we're farming, you know, we're planting all this stuff, but we won't be able to really have any type of harvest because the locusts and insects are going to eat everything up. That's a curse to most of brings to disobedience. Keep going. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them but shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes for the worms shall eat them. Same thing, you won't be able to eat the grapes or anything because the Most High is going to make sure that the worms eat all of the produce up. Okay, so he's even going to curse the land that you're working on. Keep going. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all any cost. All, all thy coast, coasts. Coast, but thou shalt not anoint, anoint thyself with the oil. So, like, you know, whenever you pray or be prayed over, people anoint your head with olive oil or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he's saying that whenever you're growing the olive trees, he's going to make sure that you don't even get to anoint yourself because the fruit is going to die before you can get to that point. He's going to curse everything that your hand touches. Keep on. 40, right? 41. Yeah. Thou shalt... Thou shalt beget. beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. So your sons and daughters will go into slavery. Keep going. 
fruits, you know? All thy trees and fruits of thy land shall the locusts consume. We just talked about that. No. The stranger that is with them the mm -hmm. shall get up above the very high and the shall come down very low. So basically those of other nations will rule over. Keep going. He shall lead, lend mm -hmm. to thee and thou shall not lead, lend, lend to him and he shall be the head and thou shall not and shall thou shall be the tail. tail. So again, we'll have to all of our enemies will rule over us, that's all it's saying. Keep going. Moreover all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake until till thou be destroyed because thou hearken this hearken yep. unto not no. unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. So if you're not obeying the commandments of the Most High, if you're not being obedient to your parents, uh you're not listening to the voice of the Most High. The voice of the Most High is literally His law, statutes, and commandments. Per Deuteronomy 28, 45. Keep going. And thy, they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed for These curses are forever when we're being disobedient. They never end. So as we get into disobedience, these curses come upon us. They are forever. Read that verse again. And thou shalt be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. You can't outrun these. You, you have to correct yourself. It's only you can't. You can't outrun it. I'm telling you. The older you get, you'll start realizing you can't outrun it no matter what you try to do. You can't outsmart the most high. There's no way. Keep going. Because thou servitest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the um, abundance abundance of all things. Keep going. Therefore shall thou oh gosh, really serve yeah. Serve thy enemies which the Lord shall send against thee and hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all all things and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he he have destroyed thee. So by not obeying your parents or the law of thy mother <laughs> the commandments of thy father and by not honoring your mother and your father he said, eventually those curses will send you into slavery again. Because we, we just read these curses are forever. You cannot run it. He said, you will serve your enemies in hunger uh, and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So in everything that you need, you have to go to your enemies. Keep going. The Lord, thought, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth as Swift as the eagle fleth, flieth, flieth a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. That's what happened when we went into the transatlantic slave trade. Keep going. Uh, a nation of fierce countenance, countenance, and which shall not regard. The person of the old, nor to show, shall show, nor show favor, nor show favor <coughs> to the Dude. young. Right, because this nation we young, they don't care about our young people, they don't care about our old people. Keep going. And he Keep shall on. eat the fruit of the cat, thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land, until thou 
be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or oil, or the increase of none, come, come, or flocks of the sheep until he have destroyed thee. So he's going to eat everything that you own. He's going to consume everything, and you, you won't be able to enjoy anything. Keep going. And shall, he shall be besieged. besieged thee in all thy gates. That means he's going to surround you in, in, in all your dwellings. Into thy and fenced walls. Thy high. By high, thy high and fenced walls come down wherein thou trusted throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege and all the gates throughout all, all the land, thy land, mm -hmm. which the Lord thy God hath, hath mm -hmm. given me. So, in, in all your dwellings, your enemy will surround you, and in all your, your fortified walls and high walls and everything, they will besiege you until they have destroyed thee, mm -hmm. destroyed you. Right. This is the curse of the Most High on our people. It's modern day slavery. Exactly. So a lot of our people are in prison. Right. Literally. Because they don't want to listen, be a disobedient. So that sounds just like prison. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own, own body, the flesh of thy sons and of the do thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress, distress. Mm -hmm. distress thee. So this has already happened a few different times before. Our people, before they went into captivity, they were surrounded by their enemies. And because they cut off them from being able to get any food and water, they literally started eating their own children. That's a curse for you to eat your own children. Wow. So that, that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother and toward the wife of his boss, boss bosom. bosom and toward the remnant, remnant. Uh, remnant of his children which he shall leave. So you're going to be... Your eyes are going to be evil towards your family. Mm. That's deep. Mm -hmm. So, so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children womb, who he shall eat, because he hath not left, left them in the siege. And in this the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress distress be in all the gates. So what's gonna happen is the curse is gonna be so bad upon you that even the child that you're gonna eat because they died, right? In this straightness, you'll have other children and you'll be so wicked that you won't even give from them to eat because you have nothing in the straightness, so you're gonna save it for yourself. Like that, that curse of madness, having to eat your children, watching your family die, that's a curse that most of us can literally put on us. So, keep going. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, bosom bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter so that just makes you know your wife your mother just evil towards her husband or her children it's a curse keep going mm. and toward her young one that cover oh gosh come in come in 
out from between her feet and toward her children which she shall bear for she shall eat them for more. so she's going to eat the, her children because she's hungry her own, your own mother's going to eat you Keep going. one of all things secretly in the siege in the, in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in thy gates if thou will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book that thou mayest fear the glory yes and fearful name thy lord the lord thy god oh yeah i got it you, you know. then Yahuwah that uh, will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues and of long continuance and sore sicknesses and of long continuance. So he's going to make these plagues continual, perpetual, from generation to generation to third and fourth generation. Amen. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt. He's going to bring all of the diseases of the world or of the land of bondage, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto you. So they'll stick to you and be in your family line. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then will Yahuwah bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So then he's going to bring sicknesses that you've never even heard of upon you. And you shall be left few in number. Did we not come here few in number to this land? Whereas you were as the stars of, of the heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of Yahuwah the Elohim. Because the base voice means to obey his commandments and to be obedient to your mother, and to honor your mother and your father. And it shall come to pass, that as Yahuwah rejoiced over you to do you good, and to multiply you, so Yahuwah will rejoice over you to destroy you. So now, the Most High is going to be glad to kill you, is what this says. And to bring you to nothing, or not. And you shall be plucked from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. So wherever you go, you're going to be taken off and destroyed. Because you can't run from him. And Yahuwah, will, uh, and Yahuwah shall scatter you among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, or Elohim, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. We talked about that a minute ago. Right. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest. But Yahuwah shall give thee there a trembling heart. You will be fearful for your life. And failing of eyes and a sorrow of mind, because all these people are getting killed in the streets by our own people, by the cops, by the mm -hmm. government. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, because you don't know, if, you know if, where you're coming going, if you're going to live or not. And thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning shalt thou say, what Elohim it were, and at evening, uh, even, excuse me, and at even, Thou shalt say, Would Elohim it were morning, for the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. And Yahuwah shall bring thee into Mitzrayim, or Egypt again, with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto you. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies, for bondmen and bondwomen, or slaves. And no man shall buy you, or save you, or redeem you. Honoring your mother and your father has consequences. Whether it's like a quick physical whooping or whether you're, you're building up uh, curses to the Mosai. You're either, you're either building blessings or curses or treasures or curses. So, again, rebellion is as witchcraft. Like, mm, a bit rebellion is as witchcraft. So why is this important? Live longer and don't get cursed. And don't get cursed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I couldn't bother. Yep, I knew it. Okay, so real quick. Go to 1 Samuel 15. I know that I know that I know that. And have him read that, because this is not just me. The I'm first not, chapter? 
Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, oh. and we're going to read verse 53. 50... 23. 23. 1 Samuel okay. chapter 15, my bad, verse 23. I was going to say, uh... <laughs> read that, that verse. Part. What does that say? 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as inquiring... In iniquity. Iniquity and indolery. Because thou hast rejected the word, 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 word of the Lord, he hath, oh, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Okay, so read that. Read that again. Bless, Bless you. you. Bless you. That's my feet. Starting in from 23, read that again. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. The stubbornness is as the quantity and idolatry. 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 Because thou hast rejected thy, the word of the Lord, we have also rejected thee. From being king. Okay, so now I want you to go to Exodus 22. So you got that. That was 1 Samuel 15, verse 23. Yeah. Which I'll add that to this. Up here. Exodus 20, chapter 22. Uh, yep. Verse. A little too far. <clears throat> I'll add that later. Um, read verse 18. Now you just said that witchcraft was a uh, rebellion was such a sin of what? Witchcraft. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and then that just says suffering out of which to live. You keep walking in rebellion. That's why you shorten your days when you're when you're disobedient. Okay, so why is this important? <coughs> um, I'm just gonna read these. Proverbs 6, verse 21 through 22. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. That's what we were talking about earlier. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. So you're always supposed to be mindful of being obedient. And in Romans 6 and 23, because whenever you're not being obedient to your parents, you're in sin, especially if they're righteous towards the Most High. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Elohim is eternal life through Yahushua Mashiach, our master. Children, obey your parents. That's all I got today. All right. I'm just reading. That's it. That's all I got for today. Really, definitely. I know he happy. <laughs> No, he happy. He elated. He excited now. Yeah, up too early this morning. What's yeah. wrong with you? I got up early this morning. That's probably why he got up early then. I don't know. Somebody was up way too early. Did you want us to stop the video? Yeah.